Hey, you beautiful people out there. Hope you're having a lovely Friday afternoon. Nothing but sunshine here in the studio. We got uh, just me and Mike staying in here today. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing so good. Mike's always doing good, everybody. We just got a couple sponsors we're going to run through here real quick, and then we'll uh, start talking some more shit. What the Okay, what do you got going that? on? There? Oh, bloody hell. Uh-oh. I knew it was something. I swear uh, to God, that never happened. Here. <laughs> Oh, our first sponsor is uh, Amazon. So if you're looking to buy anything on the internet at all, uh, make sure you check out Amazon first. What you're going to want to do is go to www.addressthismess.com, go to our sponsors page, click the link, and then that throws us some money to keep this thing going to keep you people entertained. Um, after that, we've got uh, audible.com. So if you're not a fan of reading like me, you can uh, actually just go to audibletrial.com backslash ATM. Um, that's our coupon code. That'll give you a 30-day free trial and one free audio book. I uh, I don't know about. He loves podcast. audiobooks. They're just great. It's like listening to a podcast. They're pretty sweet. Uh, also, if you uh, are into taking pills and supplements and vitamins and things to help you on your daily daily routine, go to onit.com. Onit's an online supplement superstore. They make really good products. They help you do all sorts of different things. They sell other other good products too. Yeah. They sell like coffee and uh, dude, look at our shit. Our fucking oh, yeah. web sponsor page got jacked. Nice. What is pingback? I don't know. People want us to diabetes destroy. <laughs> Gym shorts. This but should just be website. like. Yeah, click on the should... banner. Go to onit.com. Onit backslash ATM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should just. Da, 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 da. Uh, we got uh, razors. Also, dollarshaveclub.com. Are you tired of paying too much for razors? Well, sign up for dollarshaveclub.com. And for five ninety nine a month. They'll send razors directly to your door, shaving you time and shaving you money. <laughs> That's a real good <laughs> Go to the website, click on the banner, go to dollarshaveclub.com backslash ATM. That's dollarshaveclub.com backslash ATM. None of our checks from those guys have bounced yet, so I think they're still doing okay. Hey! Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look, we could almost just use whatever this is that uh, got jacked as uh, like our topics. Water ionizers. <laughs> paper day loans additional like, you know what i did watch on uh the subject of that i watched a sh- it was a shitty documentary it's really poorly done but it was exactly what i wanted to hear about it was that fucking um it's called cyber crimes it's on netflix it's bad it's this hipster dude with a mustache he tries his best what's bad about it like bad like commentary bad, he needs like, a fucking producer like nobody's business yeah whoever told him to get the shots he got yeah is a fool but um so he was tackling, camera work, yeah, yeah, but he was tackling cyber crimes, and the one he did was uh, the Silk Road thing. Right, right, yeah, like the dark. Uh, they, they call it dark net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it, but he fucking scratched the surface of the things he wanted to hear about. Yeah, and the rest of it was like this side thing where he's just talking to some like what uh, what did computer you... nerd guy. Yeah, and he's like, was yeah, the guy's yeah, voice all dubbed out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this. Out. I yeah. think this, this, and this. No, it wasn't blacked out or anything. They were just like. Uh, Kind of talking about how it developed and uh, I met some guys. why it went right to like selling drugs and hookers and having people killed and shit. Like why it went to that. What did it start out as? Well, it just started out as anything, but how that that's what took over. Like did it, it start out as just like a Reddit it. or it was just supposed to be like a open source eBay, like that type of thing or just, like, was it just a forum? But then it seems like it might've just started out of the exclusivity of only, you know, people who kind of know or in the know can get on this thing and then mm-hmm. we can all hang out so they had like forums and message boards where it's like if i know you're on here it's almost you're in a bit of an exclusive club because you know our secret it's like right you gotta do um but the guy who they allege that they caught who they think is behind it who denies everything the guy who, there's not a lot of evidence i guess but um the person who owns silk road well, the guy who started it oh, and was right. under this alias he hired somebody to kill one of his business partners or and it never worked on the right? site and it it was somebody who was catfishing them, kind of. Well, that that's really common. Like, that was what they said is the biggest comment. Uh, here he is here. Uh, Ross Williams Albrecht. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, they say that was, like, the biggest thing. Like, on any Darknet site, one of the things they offer is Hitman. And pe- these people say, like, they'll kill anyone or whatever for a certain price. Um, I think we all know how Hitman work. But, uh, <laughs> apparently, like, 90% of them are phony. Like, if not higher. Like, he hired... They said that I think this Albrecht guy paid out over a million dollars to have these people killed that were like getting onto his shit and like mm-hmm. coming after him. Mm-hmm. Not one of them died. 
It was oh, really? all he just he just went on his website, figured he could get everything done there, and he like contracted it all out, and nothing came of it. Well, you know what I learned in the documentary more than anything was the value of bitcoins. One yeah. bitcoin is like a thousand bucks. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's and the, the first purchase ever to... on bitcoin, the first purchase that ever took place was uh, somebody paid ten thousand bitcoins for two pizzas. Really? And ten thousand bitcoins is worth like tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah, on the dark net, or if you find people who will take it, right? Yeah. Yeah, here's what they say. You need a cryptocurrency, right? So Bitcoin. Um, what was the list of things? There was a bunch of weird shit. Like, you have to use uh, yeah, VPN with Tor. So it has to be like your virtual private network. Mm-hmm. Um, what were these other ones? Yeah, they were going on about that Tor thing. As soon as that was... Uh, I don't really get it. As soon as that was introduced to the game, they were able to fuck around with it. I think Tor... Um, I could be wrong. I don't know if Tor. One of them is a way to encode the message. So they, some guys at school were using it to buy drugs, and they yeah. were telling me how you did it. And it was like you would, you could send out a message, but you had to you had to put a key key pass like a passphrase on it, and the receiver you would give him the passphrase, and then he could open it. But he needed his own passphrase as well. So that's kind of how they work around it. Because I'm like, well, if you got to tell him what the password is, like, can't someone else just hack the password? But he needs his password for his account. Mm -hmm. And then he needs the passphrase you gave him. And then it will uncode the message. So even if someone intercepted you telling him what the password was, they can put it in. But now they need to know what his password is, too, for his personal use. So it. uh, Those are the guys with the real power, though. The guys who know that stuff inside and out. I, I, I'm lost even just they trying probably, to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, they probably operate inside of a totally different reality. Kind of like how a physicist looks at the universe. Yeah. And he's like, nah, this is all this. And people are seeing all this other shit. It's kind of yeah. a mirage. Yeah. But with those computer guys, they probably look at all this stuff. And they're just, they understand it at like the, the very fundamental levels of how it's built. And what kind of, and like all the power, all the tricks, writing mm-hmm. code, all that stuff. They speak the language. They know the game. And they know how much power you can get. I wonder you're granted if you know those things. I wonder like how how easy it is to manipulate like the like money. That's got to be the biggest thing, right? Like how come on that why aren't you the, skimming like yes, 12 bucks off a bunch of bank accounts all over the place just quietly if yeah. that could happen. Or what they uh on that on the dark net, you can buy like lists of credit card numbers. You can just get lists of people's credit card numbers. But then you're like, now you got to find a way to use it, like without, like you got to buy a bunch of shit online. Make sure you just buy shit on the dark net, maybe I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. you got to, you got to buy it, then you got to have it shipped to somewhere. You need a phony address, is that right? How would you do that? Just I've heard of people actually stealing credit cards and then they buy shit online, but they'll get it shipped to like their neighbor's house, mm-hmm. and then they'll watch. And as soon as the package gets dropped off, they run over there and grab it. Before the neighbors see it. It's as sketchy as anything. I know, right? You're like, (laughs) fuck. And if you're going to do it, don't do the neighbor's house. Maybe go like, go across city and then you're just going to have to sit in a car. I guess you could just walk over there and say, hey, I was just, uh, I was just getting this sent here. Now, because you don't want to be the guy that, because the the guys are going to show up at that address. The investigators like, hey, you've been getting packages. Yeah. I was like, no, but my neighbor told me that he saw my other neighbor coming across the street yeah. a lot getting packages saying he was just sending them here. So maybe go talk to him. Yeah. Well, well, I think what you'd have to do is you'd have to do it to different houses and then you would have to like be casually parked somewhere where you're far enough away. Cause if you're buying anything that's worth any significant amount of money, you got to sign for it. Right. Mm. They're not just sticking that in your mailbox and driving away. I don't so, know. I've seen it. No, I don't guess not. And that expensive scum. So then you're going to have sitting to sit on the doorstep. So you're going to have Hockey to like, sticks and shit. Those are like 200 bucks. Yeah, I've got mine left at the door, my sticks. They don't really know, though. They're like, it's a stick. <laughs> Those things can't be worth more than 20 bucks. Um, but if you park down the road, then when they pulled up, you could just pull in the driveway and act like, oh, I just got home. Perfect timing. <laughs> well, yeah, I just play the part. And then grab it. Of course I live here. Yeah. That's psychopath level of fucking. What are you buying that you're willing to go that far for? Like, what are you going to get? Is there a scam left in that business where you're not going to get pinched and pinched hard? I don't, like I, you have to be way smarter than the system. That's not that easy. But the computer guys are. Well, what was that big heist? They, someone just pulled like the last known heist, that jewelry heist or whatever, right? Um, 
just but that's a that was a heist style. like that's not like a real scam that was straight up going um i think the world's biggest heist is that fucking they stole those diamonds or something didn't they well, right there is it two two hundred million pound diamond robbery easter of 2015 so that's this true. time last year these guys made it off with two hundred thousand good on 200 them. million in diamonds and that's in pounds so i don't know what it's like weird. You can kind of romanticize. The Raiders have sealed down a lift those shaft. Those kind of the criminals. Basement. Well, they're cool. Like, you're well, like yeah, fuck, I know, you're always pulling like, for the criminal to get away with this one, right? Yeah, because there's sort of like a Robin Hood thing to it. But like you, you picture it like an Ocean's Eleven thing or like those movies. Where it's just a bunch of handsome guys in suits that are going in there and taking it. Just a bunch of fucking hooligan thugs <laughs> yeah. with tattoos up their necks and shit. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, it's probably just Brad Pitt and George Clooney and like, some salt and pepper hair. <laughs> Skinny thieves only. There's still much money. Go fuck a bunch of girls. <laughs> and what was it? They said it had to be like an inside job, though, because it was like um, they they hit all the right boxes. Like they mm-hmm. they knew what, say, security boxes to get into. Like That's pretty wild. Well, no, not quite. It says they left. They left 500 boxes that had over 1.5 billion pounds worth of diamonds. So maybe they fucked up. <laughs> Just pull, pulling them. I, I saw one. I think it was in Montreal or in Quebec, I guess. Um, these guys dug into something like that where they were in a vault with all those safety deposit boxes and stuff. Yeah. And apparently they brought food with them and they sat in the vault and had like a party while they were sitting because people had like really nice china in there apparently. Yeah. And like crystal stemware, which it, they'll yeah, probably never, never use because it's crystal, crystal stemware. stemware. Um, and then <laughs> they sat and they spray painted on the wall when they left with all the money, like uh, no guns, no violence, oh, yeah, no yeah. scare, like anything. And they just walked out. And I was like, that was pretty baller. They they didn't they steal. They dug anything? underneath. Yeah, they they stole. Oh, okay. They just took what they actually wanted to take, but yeah. hung out because they were like, we beat your system so blatantly well that was like what we know we can just sit here for like we got like eight hours to pull this off so yeah we're just gonna sit in the rush because think of the rush you get as that heist guy right that's probably the reason you're doing it in the first place yeah not just the money you jump out of an airplane man <laughs> but you have this thing where it's like this is this is an irreplaceable feeling well it's got to be a rush too but like it has to be for the rush because otherwise well who knows i have no idea how many they pull right you'd pull one heist you'd never do it again but the boss it like the think money, about right? When you're stealing anything in your life, you're like, I want this to be <laughs> over with. Let's get in, let's get out, and let's get the fuck out of town. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. But these guys... Oh, like, man, no, it comes to a crash quick, though. When I got caught stealing those wide receiver gloves let's from just fucking Sport fucking Check. fucking bask in it, they said. Oh, was I nervous. Yeah. You can... Are they allowed to ask you what's in your safety deposit box? I heard you're not. I don't know. But, like... I've heard that some bank accounts, like if you, as long as you have like a minimum, like five grand in your bank account, you get like a bunch of free shit. Like you don't have to pay banking fees and you did get like a free uh, safety deposit box and shit. Oh yeah, we should unplug that. Nice. Thing. Make sure fucking the old generator fired up. Make sure you unplug the right one. You unplug the, the wrong one and this whole ship's going down. No boy. Cut the black cord. <laughs> How was that for a heist? That's always a heist guy, right? The one guy has to like... Sit there and like pick. He's like, which wire, which wire? Which wire? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get if you have like five grand in it, apparently you can get like a free. They give you a safety deposit box for free. Like it doesn't seem like a lot of money, like five grand. To have you know, what would be bank? great that's is fine. just to leave something completely. I know fucking that's ridiculous what I want to do. There. I want to go there, put something just re- like yeah, totally worthless in there. Just and your flashlight. Back. You just keep your <laughs> flashlight in there, and you go in and you're like, I need to take this, and I, I need a moment. I'll be right back. But then I want to go in. <laughs> you like, come back and you put it back in your safety deposit box. I want to go in every Sunday at like one, and I just show up every Sunday. You go in, you open your thing, you look, you close it, then you leave. And they're like, "What the fuck's that guy got in there?" Like it's the fucking yeah, like philosopher the blood diamonds or something. <laughs> what was it that they stole in? Uh... Just a picture of Pam Anderson. In it. <laughs> <laughs> Good Canadian uh, kid. Top 10 weirdest things you're keeping a safety deposit box and go here, Michael. <laughs> Show me potato salad. <laughs> Bing! Potato salad, too. That is the seventh most. Do you, uh. 
Would you keep your new Tesla? How long until we see a Tesla driving around all the time in any city, anywhere you are? There's just a Tesla. In any, well, yeah, I don't I think uh, in Vancouver when I was just down there, uh, you see them every day. Probably. You, you pass a Tesla every day. They, you can always tell they're kind of cool looking because they don't have an exhaust pipe. That's the first thing I notice all the time. If you're behind it, yeah. there's just no exhaust. You're like, yeah, little fucker. So that new Tesla 3 yeah, this is everything really anybody ever asked an electric car to be. $35,000 car. It can for rip. It's low priced and it looks sick. Sick enough. When will I be a millionaire? Sorry, sidetrack. What is this little thing? <laughs> <laughs> They it? know who they're playing to here. <laughs> How much can I, I put in a month? I can get that money. I can round that money up. I can get that money. Who's putting away twenty two hundred dollars a month just in savings? Okay, get out of well, there. Well, look out. at that car. Scroll down. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Sidetra. Um, that's t- t- cool enough. Yeah, I don't like the rear end on it though. Like the the the, the what would say the bonnet? No, I think the bonnet's the hood. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't like the trunk. It's too short. Like, you need to fit more room back there. Right. But do you not like the trunk enough to the, yeah, not club it. a baby seal? <laughs> no. I, I'll take the trunk. I'll leave the baby seal. It's not that bad of a trunk. We don't make slow cars. That is a quote from CEO Elon Musk at the Cars Unveiling. You know what's a weird one? You will not be able to buy a better car for 35000 Because I was whining close. the other day and not, like I whine all the time about fucking people on motorcycles. Yeah. How loud that is. It's obnoxious to the point where it's like, what the fuck, guy? Yeah. You're just going to be run around being noisy. Like, you walk <laughs> around the mall and just scream all the time and talk <laughs> at like in volume 10. Yeah. Why? But, but he says, wow, well, you know, you need to hear him on the road. It really saves their, saves their lives and saves... It's, the only way you can see them but these things are almost as silent as anything right if they're rolling up on you yeah you can yeah. hear the wheels and stuff going over the, the gravel yeah or any kind of yeah but but uh i don't think you have to worry as much about getting ran over in a tesla people see you right people don't see motorbikes right that that's my biggest fear about riding a motorbike i rode my dirt bike around on the street sometimes and you're like uh or even my, my dad's got a scooter rip around on that little bad boy you don't have to fuck up for this whole thing to be over. And you can't pull that argument. Like, it wasn't my fault. Look at you, you fucking jackass. Yeah, you'd it's think like, everybody that got off a motorbike was the happiest, most optimistic person you ever met in your life. They just trust everybody. And <laughs> yeah. surely all is for the best and this the best of all worlds. <laughs> yeah. Just completely delusional about how f- much of a fuck up the average person is. Well, with how much people are texting and driving right now. Like, it's so easy to rear end someone now. Like, if you're just, like, rolling and you don't realize... If you look down at your phone and that guy hits the brakes the same time you look down at your phone, even if you look back up right away, if you weren't managing your speed and your gap, you could easily plow into the back of this guy. Now, you do that to a motorbike, that guy's probably not coming out alive. Like, you don't just casually get rear-ended off he's of your fucking be, CBR 600. He's going to be choked. <laughs> For sure. There's a good chunk and of all the And all the litigation, there. all the, the suing and insurance and Anything you get out of that, it's not bringing your fucking left leg, the feeling in your left leg back. <laughs> There's no, it's irreversible damage. Yeah. So that you can fucking feel the wind in your mustache? <laughs> get a Tesla. Get a Tesla. <laughs> miserable, miserable fuck. That is, I don't see how a Tesla's going to cure any of this. <laughs> I think Stinger's invested. He fucking put all his money into fucking Tesla Motors. And he needs you guys to start buying these things. Well, that's another that's another one where like, it'll seat like, five comfortably. If you were to, were to put is, money into Tesla, if you were this? to put money into Tesla when it was coming around, if you're doing great, you'd be laughing the whole thing. The windshield. But there's always another one coming. Nearly touch. Complete view of the sky over the occupant's head. Looks that's like true. a luxury vehicle. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. But that also isn't real. That's a computer image you're looking at. It's there. Concept. Yeah. What's the real one look like? I don't know, but it probably. <laughs> okay, here we go. Still looks pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing. Pop the hood on that bitch. Show me that lithium. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> what? How Start much was 115,000 people put down deposits before the car was even revealed? 
I Elon guess. Musk said he was going to give something special to everybody who lined up to it. Zero to 60 in less than six seconds. That's pretty good. 215 miles on a single charge, five seats, touchpad display. <laughs> Fuck, that's practical. That's your future right there. Club model. Three deliveries, Three deliveries are expected to them. Late 2017. Wow. That's pretty cool. Somebody put across my Twitter yesterday. Elon Musk is the guy Kanye West thinks he is. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the guy is fucking. That guy's changing the world. Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's in like, a way that we all like maybe had thought of. Yeah. In one way or the other. But look, like what he's even doing here, like he's giving this car over thirty-five grand. Yeah. Like if anyone else came out with this. Well, he seems to be. They're gonna want seventy. It's like he's undercutting the whole fucking It's industry. almost like when you got all that money, when you became a rich person, mm -hmm. the human nature is to become some sort of a cunt. Mm -hmm. Somehow to protect your big pile of gold yeah. so that no one gets it and you're, you're the king forever and all your family. It's super primitive, but he's the guy who comes along and it's like, no, like I'm taking none of this with me. But yeah. I have a chance to actually alter well, the course of human history. I really like that quote he had there about the bucket on the sinking ship. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you had the patent for the bucket. Wouldn't yeah, you want like to just give it to everybody like so we can bail this the fuck out? I'm in the ship too, sinking. Yeah. This is for everybody. Yeah. And then you get some douchebag like Kanye West who can only look in the mirror <laughs> for 23 hours a day. Oh, God. I'm mad that we even brought him up on the podcast. I know, but well, it's just the disparity between two humans. Mm -hmm. where it's like if you are going to get to that level of success or whatever if you're going to talk the way Kanye West talks I don't care how good you are at anything suck my dick yeah. I don't have to listen to you because yeah. you fucking rhyme words this guy's changing the world and even if Elon Musk was a douchebag yeah you'd have to give him that credit but you'd just be like eh fuck off yeah like, even you're not he... that cool guy yeah keep doing what you're doing like but in in doing what it is he's pursuing you can't be a dick in that regard. Like you wouldn't, it wouldn't be your natural yeah, yeah, disposition like you to be. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it, it, Otherwise he, you'd be monopolizing be this and just making cunt loads of money. Off but it. couldn't he be just be like a super cunt about it? Like he does this and he's like, now look what I did. Like everyone fall to my knees. Cause look how good I'm doing for all of you. You should all love me No. But that would taint him, right? It would, it would take away. It would be the, he would not be the hero. The ultra. Do you think he's hero. got a big, like a PR team? Telling him what to do. I don't know how he runs that company because, like, like does he? Have I think he's more him? of a Richard Branson style, where he's just this cavalier type, half genius, half explorer, half I don't give a fuck about anybody or anything. I'm just gonna do what I want. And I so have only have forty-four, eh? ten billion dollars behind me. Thirteen billion dollars. What's his wife look like? Ooh, man. Spouse, why does he have three? Oh, because it doesn't oh, matter, son. Justine Musk. Because it doesn't Laura. matter at that level. <laughs> you write that off like an electrical bill. Oh, look at Justine Musk. This one actually took his name. This was the one that he had before she got, before he got rich, I'm imagining. Let's see. How much of an upgrade do you think he went? So this was his wife from, what do we got here? This was from 2000 to 2008. He had her. In 08, Tesla starts taking off. He starts banging out money. He's been fighting with this bitch since 06. Finally, the uh, Model S takes off, and he gets rid of her, and he picks up to Lua Riley. I'm going to give Justine like a like a Found six. a Tesla PayPal SpaceX zip to XCOM. I feel this girl's going to go up to at least a nine. What do we got here? To Lua. What does she do for a living? She looks like a so model. Suck Elon's dick. Kalua was definitely an upgrade. I still don't know about her, though. Uh, it wouldn't have been my first round pick. It'd be weird because, like, there's that thing that happens where, say, you're an athlete making, like, $2 million a year. You get into this level where all of a sudden you can't just go around fucking everybody because you're going to get caught in a trap. Mm -hmm. And you're going to lose one of your legs. <laughs> but then you pass through this echelon to, like, $13 billion where this guy's sitting. You're back in the who gives a fuck reads and why am I not just sticking it in everyone? Everything? <laughs> well, maybe I should probably have 50 kids. That guy should probably have 50 fucking kids. You why not? Pay for, you can pay for them all yeah. for sure. And why isn't he allowed to do it? Like, it's just kind of a weird thing to do. No human is that. Like if you see someone with like 12 kids, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. What's going on here? And then like you have some sort of TLC show about them. But he could. And then it comes out that they're touching six of them. Wouldn't his kids be really smart? 
What? His kids are probably going to do greatness, right? Well, you think so, but you think whoever this broad is, whoever this Tallulah Riley is. Yeah, why is she in here twice? She can do more than his right hand can do. Well, yeah. So she's probably cool as shit to talk to. She's probably like, he could probably bounce his ideas off her. She's probably that level of broad. I don't know. Let's see. Actress. Oh, Actress. <laughs> she's a big fat phony. Well, I know, but what if it was <laughs> Natalie Portman? I'd believe it. <laughs> Natalie uh, Portman's an actress. She's the exception, not the rule. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. And it doesn't. She's got education. She went to an open university. What a class. <laughs> <laughs> Public university. Good for her. She um, laughed at that. They got a uh, vice chancellor there. Yeah. Founded in 1969. Their colors are black and yellow. That's neat. Somebody taught her to do something right. Act. Like here we are sitting in a goddamn studio. Just talking shit. Looking up this broad. He uh, he's the owner of PayPal too, right? Who knew? That way sold it, I think. Yeah. To invent and turn it around and turn it into whatever. But got a nickel. I wonder if PayPal is still as popular as it was because like some of those no those guys, yeah, either. they get out at the top and it's just a smart move. Like how Mark Cuban made his money, he sold some sort of software to Yahoo when the Yahoo Google race was going right. on, and Google wasn't quite Google yet. And they were all trying to snatch up whatever was out there. So Mark Cuban had this software. And he was like turning down these billion dollar offers and stuff. Ended up selling it for like $4.5 billion. And uh, Yahoo took the shit and it never even ended up working for him. Really? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'll take the money on it. 4.5, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with that. The dot com era. Uh, the bottom line. The bottom line. <laughs> Forest. Uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing all of Biggest purchase. Invested in everything from toilet seats to websites. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. Those are just people that are playing a game I'm not even uh, not even aware of. Really. Uh, do you think, though, you could do it? Like, if you just, like, took 10 grand and were just, like, all you're going to do every day is wake up and try to make that 10 grand into something more? There's got to be a way to do it, right? Yeah, but you just have to be obsessed, right? But then it's like, is that really the life you want? You're just sitting in front of this computer, just grinding? No, well, no, I think about it all the time. Like, not to invest or anything, but just the inability to experience true happiness until you conquer this money, this stupid fucking money thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, once you're not worried about paying your bills, then you could actually live a life. Yeah. That's way separate from this, well, this thing. You could been, be totally so separate more. experience from what you've been having before that. You could be so much more productive, like with your day. Like if you look, even just when you take vacation from work and then you get a couple of weeks where you get to go and do whatever you want. And then you could like get in this routine where you're like, this is how I want to live my life. Like I could get up and do this shit. Like I could write comedy. I could do podcasts, go to the gym and you're just doing shit you want to do. And you feel like you can really start making progress towards like goals in your life and things you want to accomplish. But then you go back to that work and they suck in 40 hours out of you every fucking week. Your best hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like they're, not taking, they're not taking the shitty ones. Yeah. They're taking the most productive hours you got. Nine to five, Monday to Friday. Like, yeah. That's the best time of your life. Yeah. Right there to get done what you want to get done. And you're really not. Yeah. And then they're giving you two days. Well, what else is a guy supposed to do? Yeah. It's like the system is set up so that people have to fucking take your order. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, well, those are jobs for kids. Well, they're not. Otherwise, you'd put some sort of mandatory fucking only kids get to do this because you are required to step up into this next economic uh, level with whatever profession you're pursuing. But I don't know, man. Until you conquer that, you, there's some sort of cloud over your head. Mm -hmm. If you're worried about your bills all the time and like where they're coming from, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden, you're doing something for money that you don't want to do. I mean, the struggle is pretty real for everybody. I'm sure <laughs> everyone listening to this knows exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, if you could eradicate that, if you could get past that, that's all I think of. But sometimes I, it's like just make a bunch of money. Like you should literally devote your entire life to being obsessed to something that's going to make a bunch of money. But well, it no, only well, seems logical. But to, I think you can make money at anything, though. How much money? I, th I think it's limitless on whatever you want to do as long as you do it with a passion and you work hard at it. I think it, I think you can make money doing anything. You can make some money doing anything for sure. But I think you can, can make... You, can you step into a world where you don't have to think about money again? Yeah, but you're going to have to probably keep working. 
you're going to have to keep doing what it is. So hopefully you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, you look at people, uh, trying to, I'm looking around this room, trying to think of something. I don't know if you, what what do you do? You make, make calendars. (laughs) If you just keep making calendars, then people are eventually like, yeah, this guy makes good fucking calendars. We want them. There might be one guy who gets to make the best calendars, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Even anything. What if it's your passion and it makes you happy, but you're not the one percent of what you do? Well, I think you'll get there eventually. I think if you keep doing something, you'll eventually get better. Like, what if nobody ever likes your art? What if whatever you paint, well, then everyone's right, just right, like, right now you're doing no. all the what ifs that are like the failures that hold people back from doing what they want to right. do. Right. But I, I believe if you're truly passionate about something you really work hard at, you can achieve it. I think. You, Everyone could achieve anything you can do they it. ever wanted. You can do it if you don't give a fuck about everything else. It, but you have to be but fully committed to it. I don't think it. you're going to make $12 million at every endeavor if you're just super passionate. I think that's why you have to play like these silly ass games like finance. You'd have to be some sort of a reptile in a Windsor knot in a nice suit going in, playing this game, get your money, get the fuck out, and then go pretend to be happy somewhere. Well, go pretend or to try be to be happy somewhere. Like <laughs> no, try I, to pay off this mental mortgage you had to fucking endure by ripping people off or living this weird superfluous life of I think you need the to be, shitty scoring system of money. Step one is getting out of the small town. You need to be in a big city. When you're in a big city, you can just see there's so much more opportunity and there's such a more niche market for things. Like if you if you go to the big city and you start making necklaces and then everyone like starts liking your necklace, you just keep making these nice necklaces and keep doing it. Eventually people are like, Oh yeah, this person makes the best necklaces. And then all of a sudden people want to start stalking them I don't think eventually you're going to make the best necklaces, though. I don't think that's necessary. Because what if there's more than one person doing that? Then well, then you both them. make the best necklaces. How's that possible, though? I mean, because people like your necklaces, man. They want them. There's so uh, many people. How many people if can be the best? you live in a city in three million, well, you don't need to be the best, I guess. I guess I'm throwing the some money, best around. To make some money, you got to be the best. I don't think so. you got to be one of the best. Yeah. But I think if you devote your life to something, you get better at it. Like, you look at... I don't know. I played hockey for a lot of years and I know how to shoot a puck. I don't know if I've told, talked about this with you before, but it's like, I don't feel I need to learn to shoot a puck anymore. You're like, I know how to shoot the puck. I fucking shoot the puck. Like mm-hmm. I can go out in the uh, driveway right now and just fire a hundred pucks. I'm not going to feel better at shooting the puck after shooting a hundred of those things. I'm going to be like, I, this is how I've been shooting it the whole time. Like, mm-hmm. but if you shoot those hundred pucks every day, like after a year, I'm going to be a lot better at shooting that puck. I guarantee mm-hmm. But it's that slow progress towards the end that is harder. I think everyone naturally, you have like a, like a quick progressing curve. Like the learning curve on everything is steep. Like you learn so much out of the gates, probably in the first five years of taking up a hobby or an interest. You're just going to keep learning and learning and learning. You're going to get to this point where you feel like you're plateauing. But you have to just push past those plateaus, just like bodybuilders always talk about. Mm-hmm. And I think the progress, though, just gets so much slower to make that extra to get to the top of that climax. That it causes a lot of people to give up on what they want to do or not make it. Because you're somehow not seeing results anymore? Yeah, you just you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. But I think you just gotta keep doing it, man. Like I really think like you I always But that doesn't always make money come. It means you're gonna get good at what you do and you're you're gonna some people just don't pay for certain things. There's just no money in some some things. And yeah, if there is, there is for like a but handful there's what, of six people billion maybe. of us, maybe seven billion now? Yeah. Someone's going to pay for everything. Dude, there's, there's girls out there making a living off of sitting on dudes' faces. Yeah. Like fat chicks. Oh, yeah. They're just going, they crush dudes. And people are like, yep, I want that. They get their paycheck and they're fucking getting online to get this girl to come over and sit on their face. Now, would you think a chick, like if I would have told you that, would you think that, that you'd make a living doing that? Or if a chick, say a chick went to her teacher and was like, I'm going to sit on dudes' faces when I'm older for a living. Not a fucking chance. Your, your teacher's going to look at you like you're a moron. Mm-hmm. You couldn't pay me to let you sit on my face. Hmm. You know? So I think I think there's enough people out there, especially with the internet now, it's really open avenues up for such markets. Um, but I, there's got to be people out there right now who are so passionate about what they're doing. And they're struggling. And, and they're s- s- been struggling their whole life and their life's almost over yeah but then that's where the question comes into play is what matters to you does Mm -hmm. money matter or does happiness well that's the discussion we're having is trying to abolish the pressure of money Mm -hmm. from your life and what you can do to do that but are you would you be happier doing something you love i guess it's that old question would you be happier doing something you love for less money Mm -hmm. or something you don't care about for the money but what you're proposing is that you do something you don't like make a bunch of money 
get out and then go do something you love. Well, what is the best way to get to a level of money where you don't have to worry about money again? It's usually something you don't dream about doing. No. We lost the headphones. (laughs) I didn't lose my headphones. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder why. So they don't run on double A's. Can't even call Dr. Dre and yell at him about it because he he sold it. He's fucking out. It's a smart man. Nothing but you know how that. ridiculous it's going to be when you think about yourself in 15 years? Man, and how your, your headphones died because they were running on <laughs> batteries that ran out? And you know how pissed I'll be when my headphones die and I'm out of batteries and then I'm driving in my Tesla and they run out of fucking batteries? No, no, no. Your yes. Tesla will be driving itself. Yeah. I don't know about you that. Have I don't trust it. That. I still do not trust that. New Tesla drives itself. <laughs> Fuck that. Is there any reason to trust machines? Uh, yeah, the ones that I program. They just... Uh, the ones I do with money in the bank. They just invented some... Uh, Watch a Tesla Model S drive itself to its owner. He's not even in the fucking thing and just says, come here. Yeah, right. Come well, on. There's a summon button. It's just what Will Smith had in Men in Black. Simple as that. Okay. This can't be. And everything bad. in that movie was pretty factual. Hey, everybody broke some guy times here, so I'm sure everyone's been in the situation. Where so this guy... Oh, heaven forbid. He doesn't want to walk in the rain, so he summons his Tesla. Drives itself very slowly over. (laughs) Very slow. This is on his iPhone he's managing this. What in the world? See, I want to see it pull out of the stall. That was just it creeping forward dead straight. I want to uh-huh. see it make that turn, not hit those pillars, not run into him and plant itself on the staircase. Apparently it drives on the highway. Oh, look it. You see that? You see that? It's it. You just are doing it. it. It's forward and reverse. That's all you got. And you're, so oh, you're, you're controlling it like a remote it? control. That's still pretty cool, though. That's good enough. But like, then see, who's not going to be fucking there it is around on your with iPhone. that? Forward, reverse, stop. So you just hold forward, reverse. Or do you hit forward and then stop? What if your phone dies? You hit forward and then your phone dies. I guess don't have the summon app. Don't be summoning your car on low battery, dickhead. I guess it would, it would just cancel the app altogether. And then but who knows? It maybe sent, it sent the command out. And then it just holds it. You know, it's got a hold in bit. Seal in. Contact. Just goes. You're just going to have a giant remote control car. Yeah, I don't know about that guy. That's a weird one. Weirdos. Still kind of cool, right? It'd be neat if you're like, imagine like you're parked in the driveway. Well, and someone's like, hey, can you move your car? Yeah. You're like, yeah, no problem. Just sit. Don't even have to leave the couch. Just don't back tell up me. Tell my car, you fuck. <laughs> hmm. It's just pe- watching people break new ground. Like, we get these things now. Why should you and I deserve one of those? Because we go to work to make money to pay for all that with our cheddar. It's not the worst. I think it's <laughs> such a waste. Like, Isn't that a shit system? Fuck this game. But you need it. Like, you can see <laughs> how it came into effect because you need it. I know. It. It's like, it's so benign as an idea when you, you present it and then all of a sudden it grows into this fucking colluded system. Well, I think we just overproduce things we don't need now is what it is. People need money. Like, there's no need to keep having our factories running at full tilt, pumping all this shit out. Like, Special interest groups. Fucking... Everything's made with corn because a bunch of corn farmers in the States were tight with some fucking real powerful people up top. And they're like, let's make everything out of corn. So everything's high fructose corn syrup or whatever the fuck. Yeah. There's just fields of corn everywhere. All in Nebraska. Is that right? Just, yeah, corn. And they just their lobby is as strong as tobacco and big pharma. And they just want more corn. Yeah. And so by corn's not the ideal thing. Like we should be using something different. No. It's that, well, it's certainly not necessary. And they certainly get... Uh, like what else could we use? They get catered to. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, uh, if we don't have a replacement, then it's not like it's... Well, apparently there was something that was, they were competing with that they crushed already. Okay. Where it was like, we don't have to use this, but we're going to because... This sounds kind of like the old hemp farmer thing Jimmy knows me. the corn farmer. The old and, uh, timber rights guy with the hemp guy. He saved him one night after a DUI, helped him bury the body. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to make everything out of corn now. You owe me. But I was thinking like with the... I was watching something on those Koch brothers. They're like the oh. big time industrial. Like they're top 10 richest people in the whole world. There's two of them in there. They're just called the Koch brothers? Yeah. K-O-C-H. And they... Uh, oh, shit. 
They uh, are. Uh, it auto corrected me. Cool. They're just the like the poster for like the worst things that could possibly happen. Special interest groups influencing elections. Oh, yeah. Like they were in the news today. In April Fool's spoof, the Koch brothers claim Clinton is on their payroll. Yeah, they they're uh, definitely a, want somebody with a red tie getting in there. <laughs> but uh, those are the guys probably bring Donald Trump in a room, slap him around. Oh really? They'll be like, yeah, you're gonna do what we told you to do. Otherwise, we're gonna explain everything that happened in your business deals in New Jersey when you fucking work with the mob or some shit like that. Yeah, They'll yeah, just yeah. have the dirt on the sky where it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in here because you step out of line. You're fucking done for, wig. You're going to get that convertible ride in Dallas. The second largest privately owned company in the United States, Coke Industries. 2013 revenues of $115 billion. It's not, not a big deal there, right? Holy fuck. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna, they'll be right back. I'm going to look up the sky. Awesome. You can uh, read people on the phone. Read people about the Koch brothers? If you don't know, now you know. Coming down to the end of the NHL season. Devin Dubnik, second star of March. Congratulations. My Twitter is a joke on April Fool's. I follow too many dumb people to think that that's funny. It's just not funny. Oh, Shell. Shell opens on. Jordan Speed is lighting it up. They love him. They love him. Oh, da -da -ba -ba. oh there's DJ. How lucky is that guy? And the Fucking. Who? First of all, how unlucky is Wayne Gretzky that Paulina Gretzky is a whore? Just uh, grew up to be a is she a whore back though? tattoo. Or is she just super but uh, imagine their kid. Like, I remember. This wasn't a, f uh, a fun thought that I had, but <laughs> I had to have it. If you just somehow got to Paulina Gretzky at a party. <laughs> and just impregnated her. Yeah. Found just did, a way. Like, did the reversal of what. Whatever way it had to happen. Maybe you bend the rules. Maybe you bend the rules. <laughs> and then you have. And then all of a sudden. Your kid. It's a little half you, half Wayner. <laughs> No oh. matter what, you can't take that away from the kid. Yeah, he's a little. <laughs> and then you just you never see him growing up, obviously, because <laughs> things. Doesn't Gretzky have a like boys though? Gretzky's got a son. Yeah, mm -hmm. plays. Uh, he, he got cut from his baseball team. I think he's playing pro pro baseball. This guy, Trevor. Yeah. How come he's not playing hockey? <sighs> I don't know. Probably got to do whatever he wanted to do, and that's what he chose. Who's Ty Gretzky? Another one. He's got two sons. Wayne Gretzky's son, Ty Gretzky. He's got a couple of them. Up here, Ty and Trevor, neither of which are playing high level hockey. Well, fuck, eh? Wayner, old Wayner. Every time I see him, how about UFC 200? They just added uh, Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz slams Dana White UFC 200. Um, they just gave that Sage Northcut kid, he'll probably Diaz be on well. the prelims or something. That fucking action figure looking kid. Who tapped to a choke, like he tapped to a head and arm choke, and he, the guy wasn't even in side control yet. He was in half guard. Yeah. And he got him from the top with a head and arm choke. Yeah. And he was squeezing on it, and the kid just fucking tapped right away. That pretty boy. Yeah. And uh, everyone was like, oh, this kid's not a fighter. He's just a fucking Jean Claude Van Damme. Like, go do a movie and yeah. <laughs> remake Kickboxer, but don't come in, the, uh, come in the octagon with that garbage. Yeah. You got no will, man. Why should you want to fight? Jesus Christ, you make $15 million just. Walk around at parties. You know what he could be? Is one of those guys that goes to like a bachelorette party, puts a mask on and walks in naked and just shoves his dick in a girl's mouth. <laughs> you ever seen that? No. <laughs> what is it? So I was reading this. What? Those pornos where the fucking guy shows up to the bachelorette party. Oh, yeah. He's got yeah. a mask on. And he yeah. Just starts it fucking just does, yeah. Doing all these town. chairs. <laughs> yeah. 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 A kid would get paid a million bucks a shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wondered. Yeah. And I'm not getting back on that porn money thing going again. <laughs> Jesus Christ, never goddamn podcast starts degrading into porn. <laughs> um, but they gave him UFC 200. And is, I think is Diaz Diaz should make more money than McGregor for this fight? No, but he should. No, why not? Because in negotiations, that would never fly. But he should. No, because Nate Diaz. Okay, what's your point? Why he shouldn't? Nate Diaz versus anybody else does not headline UFC 200. That's true. 
he's uh he's gonna make a fuckload of money more than he made last time and uh, I bet you if he wins he'll probably get fucking double but uh yeah, he kind of took gotta, the whole argument you kind of kind of got to respect the guy for like the Diaz brothers always have known their worth in one way or the other and they always ended up getting paid like Tito used to try to lean on Dana and Dana like get the fuck out of here yeah, but the Diaz but like, brothers Diaz was like, fine, I won't fight for like a year. Just fuck you, pay me. I'll go to Strike Force. I'll fight Paul Daly or some shit. Yeah, but I don't feel like like Nate was talking last time. He's like, man, I've been doing this for nine years. I'm wondering when it's going to fucking pay off. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's been like, I don't feel he's got the money he deserves. I don't feel anyone in the UFC right. is getting the money they deserve. Though. Right. Maybe like, like they three have people. to form a union, man. Not even like they really got to figure that out. Like, look at what, uh, what, what did well, probably uh, Ronda Rousey gets paid like a motherfucker. Boxing, what, uh, who was that there? Well, that's Money Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather and Pacquiao. What was that? They each got like 40 million or something? No, 100 million. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Floyd made like 200 million and Manny made like 98 million or something. Yeah, and you're like, that's one fight. But that's a weird setup because if Conor not McGregor. Paying a promotion, if I Conor guess, McGregor, or not? Yeah, if Conor McGregor could start his own fight business and make right. his own fight cars, mm. then he could do that. But yeah, those, but those, that promotion stops when. But it, the Floyd problem, I think, fighting. is that everyone says, like, if everyone here said we're not fighting for less than, like, they should be taking at least, to me, like, 60 to 70% of any income that the UFC makes should go to the fighters. Well, here's somebody. 30% uh, you can take off the top of management. There's a prime example nice. of guys doing something they love to do and have to do with their lives to chase this dream for no money. Well, that's the problem the very, is that very people, end. that's the problem, I think, with fighters is that you'll have some guy knocking on the door saying, I'll do it for free. Right. The next day, just to get to fight on that stage. And until they form a union, I don't think you're going to you're gonna have that problem go away. I don't know if they soon, could form a union. Man. I don't think you could get all the fighters that, together. Because they're in an organization. Well, the, the NHLPA, that's how that got formed. All the players were getting fucked. And then they all came together and formed the NHLPA and formed a players union, a players association. And that's basically just a union. Yeah. They say they get rights and they get a pension. They get all their shit. They made a minimum salary. That all was formed from the NHLPA. That wasn't the league. That was the players saying, here's what we want, going to the bargaining table. And they're like, yep, here it is. Yeah. Which I really feel needs to be done in the UFC. And I can't believe no well, nobody no, spearheading there's no unity. This is, a, this is a, uh, like an individual sport. I don't know if unions Do you think exist in individual sports. Do they? Tennis? I don't know. Is tennis I think it's like you just got to show up. Golf? Golf doesn't really have a union. It's got like a membership thing. Yeah, but I, I bet you they do. Like Golf, you have to kind of qualify for it. But why why is it any different if you have individual compared to not? Like, why would you not be able to have a union as an individual sport? Well, I don't know. I just don't know if the precedent exists. You just need everyone coming together, and you just need to say, right, okay, but look, how are you going to do that? They don't give a fuck about each other. Do well, it. they should. It's more like just free market you, capitalism you don't even, in there. Yeah, but like, you I'll don't, be the best. I'll get the most money. But you don't even have to think about each other. Think about yourself. Like, you're all getting fucked if we all stick together. Why should Conor McGregor do that? So he can make more money. He could probably make even more. Will he? Oh, yeah. If he has to give it out to all these other peasants? Well, no, because they'll take... Don't take from the fighters. Take from the guy up top and feed it down. Right? Like, just come in with, like, minimums where, like, you go percentages where they get. Or, like, you could have... Like, the the way that... uh, Entry-level contracts came to the NHL were so that you didn't have guys getting signed to huge money and then them being a bust and owners who, like, I just had to pay this kid tons of money... And he's fucking sucks. So that's where the league came in and says, okay, well, we want a three year, like, here's a maximum for three years. So that in your first three years, you can't make more than this. And then after we see how you pan out, then you can go wherever you want from there. And you could have the same thing with fighters. Like, you know, just have like a minimum that they get at the beginning or a maximum that they can get for their first few fights. Well, I think there's a direct. They should uh, have title holders are guaranteed a certain amount. There's something you can prove in negotiations. There's a direct ticket sales. Uh, that are attributed to a certain fighter. So if you can prove that in negotiations, you prove about what you're doing to put people in the seats, which should prove that you make more money than everybody else on the card. But, I mean, how much money is the UFC going to give away to fighters? Because there's only so many, so many ticket sales. Yeah, but then you could go off pay-per-view. Right? And then you go pay-per-views, right. which is what I think Connor gets. Or those stars get. <sighs> you get a percentage of pay-per-views, and that's how they end up making a million bucks a fight. But I don't know. Like to me, to give out, 
Because their bonus and their win bonus is still in the hundreds of thousands like, of dollars. Well, her win bonus fifty. It says here on a row, they're hundred twenty thousand for the fight and fifty for the bonus. Like I get that that's a lot of money for a fight. Like you just were in there for however long you just made that much money. I don't yeah. make that in a year. It's not exactly a day's work though. But it's like all your training, all your I know, everything. and and it's like look, look at here. Like uh, Chad Mendes, Conor McGregor gathered nine hundred fifty thousand pay per view buys. That's crazy because those things are 80 bucks. I know. So say the UFC <laughs> even only got half of that, right? Oh, they got more than that. Yeah, well, what goes to pay-per-view? <laughs> what do you mean? Who, well, who, like, like who's, you know, isn't pay-per-view a thing? Like, pay-per-view used to be a company. And you'd do pay-per-view and you'd buy, rent movies on pay-per-view. Oh, I'm not sure. Like, is pay-per-view its own what company? What they take off the top. Is that just a thing saying, like, pay-per-view? This sounds really stupid. I thought it was a company for a long time. No, I think uh, it's probably a service, but the UFC could probably independently do that. Pay per view, independently say who rents is both. Uh, I think it's just a uh, just more a, of a concept. Yeah, I I just remember like they used to have when you were a kid and you'd go to the pay per view channels. They had a logo. It said pay per view and yeah. it had like their thing. I thought they would be like a company. And then they just cornered the market. Put them in a smart company. <laughs> but, yeah. but now I guess it's obviously just every broadcasting thing has just a pay-per-view system. But uh, so no one's getting any of that money? All that money goes straight to the UFC? Yeah, I don't know what their overhead is to set up an event start to finish. But Okay, okay here you go. Rousey earned about $1 million per fight against Cat. God damn. That was like she 30 earned seconds. A, oh, she earned 130000 from the match itself. She got 870000 from 590000 pay-per-view buys. So Hello. that's just over a what dollar should they a get? buy, though. Yeah, what should they get, though? $10 million a fight? $15 million a fight? I mean, if boxers are getting $96 well, I, million it's a gotta fight. Be, <laughs> I think it has to be, though, um, it has to be a percentage thing. Like you, you, It's got to be a percentage of the take. Where mm-hmm. you would just say the fighters get seventy percent of the fight, or the the money made. Well, before Conor McGregor got it whooped, he mm-hmm. was people were talking about him getting like co-promotion rights. Yeah, where he's like, yeah, I set up like Fedor camp used to lobby for. I'm sure yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. And they're gonna be like, no, get the fuck out of here. Then go fight, fight, fight your independent fights somewhere else. Even if they had to lose their biggest star. Yeah. I think but, they'd still say fuck off. Yeah, probably. But you look at... Uh, but if that guy's out there, guaranteed, Bellator is throwing a everything. boatload of money at that guy. Yeah. If that one superstar ever does deviate... Like, look at the money they give Matt Mitrione and fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Just the money anyone giving, who yeah. came out of it, Arlovsky. <laughs> money they're giving Benson Henderson is crazy. But... No, I don't know. I think it all just would go off a percentage. You'd go from there, and then that's where you'd have to form the union and say, okay, main events, get this percent of... The, like of the purse from the fighters and it trickles down but there must be s- millions of roadblocks standing in the way because look at the how they got it stuck in them on that Reebok deal there's mm-hmm. nothing they can do yeah well, it's because, because they don't them? have a union right but it's like how they there must be more than just because they all got choked and rallied and there's guys that tried to start a union like fucking uh, John Fitch I think is spearheading something like that mm-hmm. and there's just no traction anywhere they're like yeah this is even yeah, though the well, fighters think, are like, I, I think I Dana know. probably has such good control over his uh, his people there. I think they're uh, like people are afraid to lash out. Dana probably just takes a phone call, like, "Hey, look at you guys! You're talking about doing this union thing. I'll have you cut from the UFC next week." And all those guys that are fighting, and you don't, you need the guys at the bottom to help. And those guys are probably the guys who are willing to do anything just to stay in the UFC, right? Maybe, or maybe it's just a free market system. Yeah, I don't know. If you're good enough, then you get to call your shots. Well, what what are the other promotions paying? You're not. Like, are they making more than the UFC? Apparently, the UFC structures their contracts so that you are going to make uh, a substantial amount more money in the UFC if you win. Benson Henderson was apparently set to make five times the money he's going to make in Strike or in Bellator, but he would have to win to get all of it. Whereas yeah, Bellator well, is just going to give it to him up front. Well, like they'll do like the entry level UFC will be like a five and five. So let's say you get five grand to fight five more if you win. I don't know if that's how it works up at the top too. Like if you're like, hey, we'll give you a hundred grand for this fight, another hundred grand if you win. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what what his contract well, looked know. like, but Dana said we offered him way more money. But we're looking for fighters that are, are wanting to move up, not fighters that are wanting to hang out or move down. Yeah, I mean it does it does make incentive. It gives good incentive to win a fight, which is probably really good. It makes people fight. You probably fight a lot more aggressive. You know, you got a hundred grand, right? If you know you can just go in there and float her out, you're just gonna talk to the guy across the ring there. Hey, let's just both uh, just keep this pretty tame here. We both got paid already. Like, no the fans one needs do to get dictate hurt a lot here. of it, though, right? If you can win the fans, well, that's how that's all Connor did. Mm-hmm. Like Connor, I still feel he hasn't accomplished a lot in the ring. Mm-mm. I mean, uh, his biggest thing, well, knocking Aldo out was that was big, but I don't feel like that. Uh, that I think overhyped Connor. I don't think he's as good as people think he is from that one punch. He just like, got tapped. Yeah. He just got fucking Well, and he got fucking dinged, man. Yeah. Like, he was, like, fucking out. He was yeah. out. When striking's his game, he got outstruck. Yeah. Maybe well, not the first round. I, I still don't know if he got outstruck, but he, he doesn't have the power he thinks he has uh-huh. in that hand. Like, he, he landed he land, yeah, he landed that punch, like, three good bangers right on Diaz's chin. I mean, Diaz does it, like, as a cement head, too. Mm-hmm. But... Like, that wasn't putting Diaz out at no, all. No, and he was leaking and everything, but uh, he, and then Diaz it's not like Biz being beaten Silva, where he, like, outpointed him. Yeah. It's like, no, he he took his best shot a few times, and then he's like, okay, well, here's mine, and you couldn't handle it, and yeah. you went down, you shot for a double. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't know what to do in that situation, and you yeah. got exposed on the ground. Man, it's so weird seeing their legs lock up, eh? Like, when, you, when he, because Diaz just lands that, like, stiff jab on the chin of Connor. And his leg almost just springs straight. <laughs> it's like, bing! And he's like, starts walking like stompy. Like he's all clumpy with his footwork now. He's not like moving loose. It's just he's like walking on two stilts like uh, like a pirate that has those wooden legs. Mm-hmm. He's just stamping around the ring. You're like, oh man, you are And that's trouble. the thing. When you want to be this fucking, he wants to be Brad Pitt and Snatch and just yeah. one punch everybody. Yeah. And it happened. He did it to Aldo. Like, yeah. One of the craziest things that's ever happened in MMA, for sure. Yeah. But when... When you get cracked and you get hurt, and then all of a sudden everyone realizes, oh, there's part of his game. Not only is he not in a, a he's not using a, his energy a, efficiently. A, <laughs> he's not in a real good place. He has no ground game that's going to compete with any of the top level guys he's yeah. fighting with. Diaz is ridiculously yeah. good. Like Diaz, I think is really underrated. But he, most guys at the top have some sort of really underrated ground game. Like especially if yeah, you yeah. become that uh, elusive, crazy striker like Anderson Silva. Yeah. Well, you don't want to go to the ground with Anderson Silva. Yeah. So he's like, well, everybody's going to stand with me because everybody knows I can get him on the ground. Yeah. Give or take. So you want to stand with me? Well, I'll learn how to do that in a way where you don't want to stand with me anymore. And then what? And what are you going to do? Wrestle me? Put me up against Cage? You don't want to do that either. Have you seen this guy? The guy, this uh, fucking Michael Page, whatever his name is. Is that, a, is that the right name? It's this guy here. Yeah. Have you seen him? They're saying like this guy. They're like, the UFC needs to sign this guy. No, I haven't heard of him. No. He's fighting in those like lower league promotions. But, um, hang on. That's good. I'll watch. Shouldn't be far away then. It's not like they're going to miss him. <laughs> no, we never heard about this guy. <laughs> Why did he come fight the UFC? <laughs> uh, just trying to find like a better... But they're like they're saying the UFC needs to sign him, and he's just a freak. He he fights like Silva, but he's doing it to. You don't know how the, the quality of his opponents are, right? Right. But he seems to have it all figured out, man. Like you're still fighting fighters. Like these guys are still probably training as hard as anyone, and people can't hit this guy, man. And he's just a dick in there. Well, this guy probably like probably trains at a quality gym at least, right? I would imagine. So I'm sure there's some fighters that have heard of him. Know does he fight at 170? I don't know what he's fighting at. Here. But yeah, uh, he's got some crazy length. Yeah, they're not really showing. Like, what's his background? Uh, Looks like he's got some great kicks. <laughs> what's that? Okay, hang on. I saw it the other day. Uh, I'll look at this. What happens if he gets fucking double legged and put on his back? Here it is. Uh, there we go. Uh, I think he's really good on the ground too. Like I yeah. Uh, 
Uh, what's his name? Oh, he should be on his way. Michael Page. Mm-hmm. Look out for Michael Page. Uh, he should be in the... There's one. There's a good highlight reel of him. You he's know there's another guy coming after him too, right? It's just oh, gonna be yeah. This might be it here. But he, uh, I don't know, man. He's crushing guys. Like, he's got this crazy knockout that went, like, viral. He does, like, a spinning kick to this guy's face. And uh, is this one we just watched? But he does, like, this spinning kick to this guy's face and knocks him out. And this guy here, he knocks this guy out bad, man. And he doesn't. Oh, no, is that it? Oh, that guy's like. that's not it. He didn't want to be in a fight. No, that wasn't it. But he, like. He does this kick and knocks him out, and he's like, this guy's the guy he fucks up. And he just stands there and doesn't even look at him after he kicks him in the head, and the guy just falls down. It almost looks like something like a movie, like that stupid uh, Never Back Down movie. This guy, uh... But he fights hands down the whole time. This guy looks like he's fighting like guys that just aren't even in the fucking well, same league. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Like, who are these guys? I mean, they look like they kind of know what they're doing and everything, but... But that's... Where you're like, how does this work? Like, is he really... There's got to be a reason he's not in the UFC, right? Yeah. I'm sure these guys have heard about him. Or maybe he just hasn't had, like, his coming out party yet. Like, this this is the one I think they'll show it. They'll probably save it for the end. It's annoying. Right here, yeah. Boom! Well, it's right on the chin. Look at this. That's not good. You got <laughs> that hand up, look son. At, oh, no, show it. He just stands over him. He doesn't even look back at him. And just drops him. But he, do, he fights like that hands down style, like Silva does. Yeah. Like, I don't see, know. This if looks good, like a legit. What is this league here? If a good what is wrestler this? They've got watchdogs on, on there. They've got, like, this. What league is this right here? Um, that almost looks like a UFC. What's one. that oval? So it might be. Uh, it's Bellator. Bellator. So, like, they got to be putting on good fights, right? Yeah, maybe they just uh, they're gonna pay this guy enough money to keep him. But look, he's he not might even be looking. Look at him. He won't even, like he's not even looking at the fighter, and he just kind of fucks with them. Definitely can mix things up. I'll just um. Yeah, this thing's degrading. It's probably good to sit on. Just watching this guy do fucking spinning head kicks for the last ten minutes. Um. Well, so yeah, that's the other thing about the UFC. Are they the only sport that like? <laughs> Just such a bunch of dicks. They copyrighted the arena. Like no the one else did that. They you're like, yeah, they're like, no one else is fighting in an octagon. Like that shows no confidence in your league when you're like, we're. You, it's the only sport where they're like, we're taking what we have. Like you can't have an octagon. You have yeah. to make your ring some other shitty. Whereas sh- everybody shape. can use the square and the ropes. Everyone can use boxing, ho- hockey. Everyone, every hockey league in the world can use the same hockey rink. You know, baseball's a little fucky. They don't seem to give a shit what you use. But football, football is not like locking her down that you have to have that. Maybe they do. Maybe because the CFL must spend some money behind it, right? Like if they lock down the octagon and that seemed to be what got them where they're going today yeah. at the beginning. It was like locking these guys in this octo cage. Yeah. Yeah, it must have just been but copyright. To me, it just seems like they're such a, like they're not confident in their product or they're like, no, no one else can do what we're doing because they might do it better than we are. Or maybe it's just a smart business move. Yeah, but then... The if you can copyright your shit, copyright your shit. Yeah. Then if you got the best shit, you're the only one who can use it. Yeah. You got to come here to get your octagon. That, that's the opposite of the Elon Musk thing, though, right? That's just a guy being an asshole. Mm-hmm. Could be successful well. in business and still be an asshole. <laughs> anyway, we should wrap this up. I got some shit I got to go do. Some would say it's the point. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. We had a great time in here with you guys. Uh, yeah, have a, a lovely weekend. and Take care of each other.